Bienvenue dans cette nouvelle entrevue. Donc aujourd'hui, nous sommes avec Fran et Douglas de Phoenix Artisan. Merci beaucoup. Thank you so much. Pouvez-vous vous présenter? Hi, hi. I'm Fran from Phoenix Shaving, and this is. I'm Douglas Smythe from PhoenixShaving.com, as well. <laughs> Quels sont vos rôles? Well, first, first. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Cyril, for having us. We've been waiting a long time for this interview, and it's, we've been very busy, and these guys have been so patient. We appreciate that, so thank you, and welcome to Arizona. Okay, thank you so much. <laughs> so the roles we play within the business are, well, I guess they're multifaceted, but different between the two of us. The relationship between Fran and I, business-wise, is very harmonious, uh, almost like a double helix, where we both cover different aspects of the business, uh, and we specialize in different things, be it making different products, to bookkeeping, to order placement, to fulfillment. Uh, there's a, a division of our tasks. Yeah, so a lot of the, a lot of the behind the scenes work um, that involves fulfillment of orders, customer service, ordering supplies, um, repairs to the building, all that kind of thing. I do a lot of that type of coordination and then um, yeah. Douglas does most of the creative, um, most of the set creation, all of the graphic design for all of the labels, um, most of the, the content for the website and all of the marketing and media, he's largely responsible for. And then we work together on a lot of the product creation. So product creation, packaging, what kind of labels we're using, we'll collaborate a lot on those things. We're always touching base with each other. Perfuming is my baby, she Thank no you. touch. <laughs> she no touch. <laughs> yeah. Every once in a while, she I does. will come up she with a touch. She does touch. She does. But um, but you know, I got into um, the formulation part of soap making. Um, I was more interested in colors and formulas, and I wasn't really interested in scent much initially at all. I didn't wear perfume or I didn't do anything like that. So he. Um, really came in with a strong desire for fragrance and through that I've learned a lot but that's primarily um, what he brings into um, you know when we're coming up with 70 cents or 100 cents those are really coming out um, you know he'll come up with something new every every week really and so we just we kind of it's not even a dance around each other but we don't step on each other's toes where it all comes down to and um, you know and especially in in like CK6, formulating CK6, that was our baby for a while. It was fun, it was something we were doing for fun. And you're, this is probably gonna come up in another question, so I'll, I'll just leave it there. But yeah, we just, we don't get in each other's way and we have very powerful and strong chemistry in regards to what we do. Okay. What is the difference between Phoenix Artisan and Kwon King? Uh, well, the first difference would be, um, Crown King happened a few it, years yeah, ago. Yeah, Crown King was more of a, it, it started with a brush line. I wanted to create a synthetic brush line. Okay. And I wanted to differentiate that between uh, Phoenix and the brush line because we were also considering putting this stuff in stores. So we just wanted to have a separate side of the business, like a sub subsidiary of Phoenix Shaving. And so that's how Crown King began. And we started researching different knots and different handles for the brush line. The problem is, we took so long developing this and researching this. In the meantime, other artisans started hearing about synthetic brushes too. Someone put a link on, on Reddit, and the next thing I know, people are releasing synthetic brushes before we had a chance to. So it really kind of crushed the whole thing. Uh, so when that happened, I wouldn't call it a failure, but it, what, it didn't do what I wanted it to do. So with that, we decided to continue Crown King as another subsidiary of Phoenix Shaving, but just introduce five maybe six soaps and matching aftershaves and pitch those to big box stores like Whole Foods, uh, different supermarkets and whatnot, uh, rather than offer our entire Phoenix line, which was like 50 cents. Because if a store, if one chain of 500 stores placed an order, it would put us out of business. We wouldn't be able to do it. But with five soaps or six soaps, we would be able to, we figured anyways. Um, so that was what we wanted to do with it. And we tried, we, tried hard enough but you have to jump through so many hoops it just wasn't worth the time and energy we're putting into that 
And plus, I could not stop at five or six soaps, and I just kept making more because I, you know, that's what I do. I'm crazy. Okay. <laughs> so one of the one of the things that we've learned over the years has been to be that I'm really, crazy. <laughs> to be really flexible and to continue to just move with what's working and just keep trying new things. So Crown King, we tried to see, well, how would this work? And then we come out with the razor, how will this work? And, you know, if it's good and we'll keep moving in that direction, if it's not so good, then we'll shift gears. So we've always maintained this, like, we're very dynamic and able to kind of shift. And that's been um, a real benefit to yeah. us because we're able to continue to come out with new things and then be able to just kind of keep self-correcting. Yes. So that's... Uh, kept us also really motivated to keep trying new stuff and that's so that's been really fun so Crown King was sort of just an expression of that creativity and what more can we do how can we do this differently how can we offer something to more people because we're really trying to reach just a bigger audience of people and get more people interested in this type of shaving and all the efforts that we're making are, are towards that end really so um, so Crown King was you know just how can we present this maybe in a way that isn't More so overwhelming to somebody brand new to shape? Yeah, it, like so. little tiny sound bites is how everyone digests information these days. So if you offer way too much or too much, you're going to create analysis paralysis and you're not going to get any action from a person. But if you offer a smaller line too, they're more apt to, oh, okay, I get it. I got five choices here. But if you give them five choices, you know, they're okay, 50 choices, they don't know what to do. So. And then once you're enthusiastic and you get interested in shaving, then 50 choices is great. Yeah. But initially, maybe but it was for someone in the supermarket to like go, ah, oh, what's that? Yeah. That was the long one. Mind you, I'm very hungover right now, so bear with me. <laughs> We've had a long weekend. Yeah. Okay. And my voice doesn't often sound like this. It sounds like a frog. <laughs> Chocolate cover. Chocolate. <laughs> Quelles sont vos inspirations pour les senteurs, les formules, les rasoirs, les brosses? Everything around us. So yeah. last night um, I was walking to dinner with some people from Big Shape and we were walking by a candle that was burning and just some of the uh, scents that were coming from the candle, just anything that, that for me hits me as like nostalgia or particularly stuff that reminds me of my childhood. So we have a scent, Aloha Smackdown, which is, um, you know, just like, smells like fruit punch, which just reminds me of, you know, when I was at my grandma's house as a little kid. And um, a lot of scents will come just out of, you know, our surroundings or reading a really interesting story and trying to capture that in a scent. So the scents come from Everywhere. all sorts of different um, avenues. And then Douglas does tons of you know, research on perfuming constantly to see, you know, what is coming out, what is interesting, what are people working with, what are some of the ways you can combine things together, and then we're trying things all the time. We have thousands of different scent notes in our lab at this point, so with the scents, it's just um, try to find that muse or inspiration, you know. Just remain open to the inspiration and that sounds so goddamn pretentious and I don't and mean lots it of sampling <laughs> yeah. lots of trial right They're yeah just combining. we make far more smell? mistakes yeah. than we <laughs> make hits I mean but it, it, she's right it does come from everywhere I mean even the, the recent release of the chill mill like that's total accident in the United States we have Reese's pieces Reese's pieces uh, or Reese's uh, butter cups peanut butter, peanut butter cups, cups. Yeah. and the commercial used to be like a guy with peanut butter and another guy with chocolate and by accident the chocolate ends up in there, and it's like, hey, you got peanut butter on my chocolate. Oh. And it's so the chill mill was very similar. I'm trying to make the world's coldest soap. I'm doing all this research for like weeks. I have all different ingredients on my desk, and I turn around to Fran's desk, and she's eating lunch, you know, and she pulls out a pepper grinder. And, and I have a bag of menthol in my hand, and I'm looking at that, and like, oh no, it was salt. So I'm looking at it, and the salt looks like crystals, because it's salt. They're big pieces of salt. Menthol looks like it just like, uh, yeah, right there. So like, you, you just gotta be open to it. Okay. That's where it comes from. Like, we can't really thinking outside of the box, sort of. Or just just being open. You don't even have to think outside the box because it's all out there. You know, you just have to be open to letting, you know. Mm -hmm. And again, it sounds pretentious, and I don't mean it to, but it's just the reality of the situation. <laughs> and formulas, you know, we're always trying to make our soap the as best we can, best as we can. 
with whatever the current knowledge base is that we've acquired over the years. Like, and so you know, you'll see people often be like, "All oh, soap is the same, yada yada yada." New and improved. They're just trying. You know, no. Any good artisan gets better the more they do it, and they want to deliver the best product they possibly can. So you are going to see new and improved a lot. You know, and you should expect that. Whoever does sits back on their laurels and doesn't try. Why do you want to buy? I mean, like, why would you participate in that? Like, you want to support yeah. and it, innovators and just creativity and constantly bettering of oneself. It always comes from a place of there's always more to learn. So formulation, scent creation, you just learn so many things doing that. So um, if, we're, if we're interested, you know that we've lost our passion when you stop seeing a new <laughs> scent every week, yeah. you know, <laughs> or going back to the drawing board to reformulate. It's a really time-consuming process, but the learning, you know, is amazing. And then out of that, usually just just the the pursuit of that, you might actually come up with a completely different product that you never even exactly. thought about because you learn, you start to research a new ingredient, and you find out, okay, you know, this is what this is used for. These are other products you find it in. This is what you can do with it, and um, and that's you know that's why we do this really. Yeah, and or, or multiple scents. You can be trying to make one scent, and since you, it's trial and error, suddenly you have eight cents and three of them are awesome and you only wanted one now you have three great new cents so i mean like when you constantly push yourself like that it only good things can come from it it's like uh photography uh before digital photography you had film so you take a film class or whatever you're an artist with the, with the camera you take as many pictures as you possible possibly can can afford to with the amount of film you have in the camera and you probably get one Masterpiece, you know, but you got to keep taking all the other ones to get that one masterpiece. Masterpiece. <laughs> yeah. So that's that. Okay. In regards to the our razor and what inspires us to make razors, it really comes out of a, a passion for the hobby, our collecting of vintage wet shaving products. Uh, I'm a huge fan of vintage razors. Um, not so much Gillette as I find a lot of people are, but more so what was going on in the rest of the world at the same time. So, you know, razors like Le Coq or uh, um, Le Reche, um, uh, just oddities, or not necessarily oddities, but stuff that was go going on at the same time in other countries I find much more fascinating, and sometimes, most of the time actually, better designs than Gillette. Um, so, but what happens there, since Gillette, since we're living in the United States here, Gillette is the most popular and the one you find the most in the antique shops. And uh, you hear very little about these other rare razors from other countries. Um, and when you do find them, they're much more expensive. Some of them can be, you know, $200, $300 and whatnot. And who's got money for that? But they, they shave so well, and I feel like the world's missing out on this. And I would like to see them in everyone's hands, at least to experience. So our idea was to reboot a lot of these classic vintage razors. And that's, that's where the inspiration comes from. Uh, in the production of them. Uh, and when it comes to the design of our original razors, a lot of that is also born out of the same idea. It's like, okay, this is a great design. The double open comb um, was a great design. Why did it stop? Why wasn't it explored more? What can we what can we do to, to explore it more, to evolve that, that concept? And that's what we've been doing with that razor for the last few years. And I think we finally hit that. You know, I, I don't know if we can make it any better, but we'll try. <laughs> um, yeah, and a lot of these old razors they didn't stop being produced because they weren't amazing razors. It was just things changed, you know, War, wars happened. Market um, share. Gillette, Gillette went after them. <laughs> manufacturing changes, materials change. Um, people move in different directions, but they're still fantastic razors. So um, we go to lots of antique stores, find, you know, do a lot of searching, find things. And if they shave, great. Um, and we try to talk to other people that also have experience and if they're really worthwhile and we want to give it a try We will see what we can do to bring it back. Yeah, and we want to share that with the rest of the world I think everyone should have some of these classic razors in their hand and more often than not they can't afford it And so we're trying to make it available to the world and the same thing can go for our brushes as well Our most recent brushes, you know, I mean like those are tributes or homages to some of the classic brushes of the past with a modern twist utilizing synthetic uh, knots as opposed to animal hair Pouvez-vous nous parler des produits en Europe de, de développement Parce qu'actuellement, il y a déjà CAD, euh, Cavendish, Depodox, Harvest Moon, Malboj, Solstice et Gondolier. Can you talk So, um, so a few years ago, um, 
we started to certify some of our products for sale in Europe because the the um, demand was there. The certification standards in Europe oh. versus the United States are very different. Um, so there's a, a registration portal in Europe for any it, soaps are considered cosmetics. So um, a few years ago, we started certifying soaps, which is actually a very if you're a, a United States producer, uh, it's a very lengthy, um, involved process that requires a lot of documentation that actually even from suppliers in the United States is hard to get. And then um, the cost for certification, typically uh, there's different um, there's there's different organizations that can help you with it. But for a single a single product is a single scented soap. So CAD is one CAD soap is one product, Cavendish soap is one product. Um, and then if we wanted to do the CAD in a different formula, that's a different product. Or it's, even the aftershave. Or the aftershave is another product. So each product um, requires individual certification and the certification can run around seven to 800 euro per product initially. And it varies here and there, but and depending on the type of testing you need to do with the product um, and then, you know, just getting the documentation that you need. And then there's a yearly fee to keep it certified um, and a lot of uh, records documentation and other information that we just don't have to procure in the United States. So the reason there aren't more products in Europe is just because of the cost. So this year we have a plan to certify at least three more cents in also our new formula. So once we get the new formula, um, kind of worked out and, and the, the base formula certified and all the documentation there, adding new sense is a little bit easier. So we do want to bring out three. We, we're pretty sure on two of them. If we can do more than three, we will. It just really depends on time and cost for us. But we want, well, we to, want, to. We want to keep doing it. And um, we're also going to have more razors and more brushes available as well. So um, we're working to try to, um, you know, get as many products as we can reliably over there. It's a little bit hard because shipping is expensive and takes a long time. So we, you know, people contact us a lot about, you know, wanting to buy our, our goods in Europe. And part of the reason is really just, just cost and we are a really small business. So we're always trying to work on our cash flow and keep everything moving. But um, well, the, we do want to get in, in the second half of this year is when we're gonna really start to focus on getting those additional products certified to see them on the shelves I would hope by the fall um, so that's our goal for this year and we want to keep expanding that because it has been really positive and um, you know the people that we've been working with have helped us make it easier to get things shipped over there so we have a lot of really um, great people assisting us and a lot of interest and enthusiasm for it so yes we are definitely going to work on getting as much over there as we can as as time and money permits us to do so yeah and but I mean if you're in Europe now and watching this um, you can get proactive also and you know ask your local retailer or wholesaler or yes. barbershop to stock us just to show some interest if, if there's a more interest and a lot more it, it inspires us to focus more on that yeah feedback is important so yeah letting people know you know your places that you like to buy locally or even just within the country that yeah. you're in let them know you want um, our stuff uh, Gibson care yeah. you know, over in Spain gibsoncare.com carry our, is our distributor our, our European distributor so yeah. you really like people need to make some noise and say they want us there and Gibson care will let us know and that inspires us to put more time and energy to bring more over there but there has to be a desire for it otherwise we don't know what's going on over there if it's worth our while or not yes. but we want to you know I mean we want to we really want to be everywhere so yeah so Gibson care is a um, is a brand of El Miral distributions so they're in Spain and we've been working with them as a distributor so people if they're looking for where to buy our products in Spain they our can, limited products they can contact El Miral.com um, and there will be somebody who can tell them, you know, if you're in Switzerland or you're in France or you're in Germany, where they can buy, they, where they can go, Italy. I mean, all over Europe and anywhere that it's logistically easier <laughs> to get the soaps shipped from Spain, um, they're there to provide that information for anybody that's yeah. interested. And then also telling them the things that you'd like to see, and we'll get that feedback because I do work with. Um, the owner and we talk about what what people are asking for so that is a good way to let us know what, what you're looking for. Okay. Quels sont vos projets futurs pour cette année ou à venir? 
since I was six. Oh, I'm sorry, what was the question? <laughs> <laughs> Other than since I was six, my future project has been um, future projects. You know, we just got done with the big shaves west, and like at the same time releasing stuff parallel to organizing this event. So. Our future, we released like week? five new projects. You mean next week? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We released like five new things for the event, and I haven't really thought of what the next one is. Yeah, yeah. so we have a whole bunch of new stuff that's coming out, um, you know, now, this week coming up. Oh, yeah, so, so yeah, so what was released yesterday will be out in the. the uh, we didn't necessarily start with a huge, like, future projection. We sort of kind of let things develop without too much of a, um, a, a, a firm like like really final discrete point in mind um, obviously we want to grow and we want to keep developing things that people are looking for so we're, we're pretty nimble and responsive to what folks are talking about um, you know we see uh, I guess more noob stuff like yeah. we want to like look at our starter kits and you know tweak them out a little bit more with, with the, the feedback we've been getting with our new starter kits. We're trying to reach sort of a, we, we want to broaden the audience. We want to reach new people. So we just came out with the starter kits this year, yeah. which was a really long time um, development. Coming, yeah. And, you know, we've started to branch out too in, in the different shows that we're going to and trying to kind of find different audiences for traditional shaving. Like so, untapped audiences. It's, it's exciting to speak to people that have no idea what you're talking about. Because uh, I mean, I can talk like the event yesterday is wonderful. You know, we all share the same passion for traditional shaving, so we can talk shop all day long. But there's nothing like talking to a newbie that has yeah. no idea what you're talking. Their eyes widen. They're excited. They, it's not. Oh yeah, I know all about that. I know, but they don't know anything about it. They, they want to know more. They're hungry yeah. for it, and like that's the people I love to talk to. So, like to so I, I guess the questions that we ask ourselves and how we want to move forward are: How do we make this more approachable? You know, like how do people get interested in wet shaving? What are the what are the avenues to like agreement that this is like try it give it a, give it a go why you know people start because maybe they get ingrown hairs or they need a ritual or there's all kinds of different approaches so what are people what are their questions and how do we help to kind of break down those barriers and get them started in an affordable way that's friendly approachable there's tons of resources for education but also not too much so they can just give sure. it a try and see if it's for them so with that in mind, it's not, it's not only projects like, or uh, products rather, but it's you know, media that we're going to put out in the future too. New shows, a new podcast, or a new roundtable or whatnot. Just trying to reach reach the world and take this to the mainstream. I think that's that's actually the question. Right? I think world domination comes up World a domination lot for you, in regards so. to wet shaving is what we're talking about, folks. <laughs> You've heard it here first. <laughs> Moi je voulais vous remercier parce que hier c'était Big Shave, c'est un grand événement de l'année aux états unis et merci pour euh, votre investissement personnel, l'organisation et si vous avez quelque chose d'autre à dire pour le, la fin de la vidéo. Gracias, gracias, trato. De nada. Trato, mucho toro. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> it's been really fun, we're glad that you guys were able to come all the way to Arizona yeah. for an event and um, hope that we'll see you again. Yes, it was great that you guys have been very US patient with us and we else. traveled very far to get here and that means a lot to us that, that it means you guys believe in the event and that we are very grateful for that. So thank, thank you, you so for much. joining us. It's really, thank you so really, really, really awesome yeah. and special. Thank you. Thank you so much. And welcome to Arizona. <laughs> yeah. Grazie mille in Italia. Grazie mille. Mi gusta tu estilo. Grazie mille. Ciao, ciao. Bon <rire> yeah. Et je fais la fin de la vidéo. Euh... Dis-lui que je fais juste le mot de la fin. Oh, il est juste going to do the, the, uh, the end. Do the closing. Yeah. Oh, ok. So, I, ok. Oh, well, stay there. Okay, I'll just be. <rire> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, okay. Can I splash this in your way? <rire> <rire> J'espère que cette vidéo elle vous plaira, mais moi c'était vraiment un grand plaisir. Show. Is that good? Yeah. Okay. You want to do it on the noodle and tea? No. There's whiskey. <laughs>